I must warn you as I begin this video, this discussion and some of the images I will show may be disturbing to some viewers. I've been trying to make this video for about three years. I keep starting it and never finish it. And even when I get close to finishing it, I'm not ready to release what I've done. But it's time, and that's why I'm making this video today. Let's go ahead and address the elephant in the room, or in this case, skin cancer. This week, I had surgery to remove skin cancer on my face. This is the fifth time I've had surgery for skin cancer. And while my gardening videos are intended to make people better gardeners and to teach you about gardening, I realize that I may be placing you in harm's way. And that's why I want today to talk about the issue of skin cancer for gardeners and for everybody and some of the things you can do to prevent it and to deal with it. I'll show you what I've gone through from examination all the way up to chemotherapy to deal with what for me is a recurring problem that I've had for about 10 years now. It's better, but I can expect that I will have more surgeries as a result of skin cancer. Now, I'm a serious gardener. I've been gardening 20 years almost every day, putting me outside all of that time. And the sun's damage has affected my skin. Before that, for 20 years, I was an Air Force pilot. And when I was a pilot, there was no discussion about protecting your skin from the harmful UV rays of the sun. And before that, well, I was a kid, like a lot of us, who played outside, getting sunburned and tanned during the summer. When you add all of that together, the sunburns as a kid, the sun exposure at 35,000 feet, and two decades of being outside without full protection, my skin is damaged. And as a result of that, cancers are beginning to show. Now, I'm not worried about this. Some of the reasons why I haven't made a video till now are because of the personal nature of cancer. And also, like many people, I'm a bit vain. I don't want to show a part of me that might not look so good. And I don't want to be seen as a victim. Well, I'm not a victim. I'm just dealing with some personal skin problems and trying to show you what I've been through so that maybe you might not be exposed to those same type of issues. I have an incredible dermatologist. I've heard from other doctors that he's the best in my city, and I would believe that. He has been able to walk into the examination room, look at me from across the room, and say, oh, you've got a cancer right there. It started by a physical, and the doctor I had suspected a skin cancer, and I was referred to a dermatologist for the specialized treatment. And I'm so glad that I did. Here's a typical examination that shows some of what I go through on a yearly and sometimes twice a year basis. These are pre-cancers, Scott, what we call actinic keratoses from all that time out gardening in the sun. Just in case you wanted a little audio there. No, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, try not to show too much pain.
Doing all right, both of them? Yeah, got a lot of them. I actually wear sunscreen constantly and always wear a hat. Good. And I still have all of this activity. Yeah, yeah. Some of this goes back decades, you know. Sun exposure from the time you were a kid up till now. There's one on your ear here. That was liquid nitrogen that he was using. Every time he saw a precancerous growth, he squirted it with the liquid nitrogen. That kills all of those skin cells. As you could see, I had a lot of precancerous growths. Now, that video was from about three years ago when I was first thinking about making this video. And you could see that it was not a pleasant experience. We had fun, we make jokes, we try to laugh it off, but it takes a couple days for some of that pain to go away, especially when you have those little squirts of liquid nitrogen all over your face and your neck and your hands. It got so bad that I was moving from once a year in the examination room to twice a year in the examination room. And my doctor suggested, and I agreed to a treatment of Effudex. Now, Effudex is a chemotherapy treatment. It affects the RNA and DNA of cancerous cells. And so you put it on your skin and it essentially kills the cancer before the cancer can grow. But of course, there's a side effect like with a lot of chemotherapies, your skin turns red, it becomes very painful, and you've got to keep using the cream for weeks for it to be effective. Now, this image is going to be disturbing, but this is what my face looked like after a few days of this treatment. And it only got worse. Just as the treatment was ending, this is what my face looked like. I'll admit, this was the most painful thing I've ever endured, but it achieved its effect. I'm now back to once a year for my examinations, and my most recent examination only included three precancerous growths, so it was actually pretty nice. But there was the problem with this part of my face. I suspected that it might be skin cancer, and of course, my doctor recognized it right away. Now, I've become quite knowledgeable about these kind of issues, and within the examination room, there's a nice placard that identifies things that I should be looking for, the ABCD of skin cancer. The problem is that this is information that you might not see unless you are at a dermatologist with concerns about skin cancer. That's another reason why I'm making the video today, to try to make you aware of the ABCD when it comes to your skin. And A stands for asymmetry. If you have a growth on your skin, you want to look at it. And if one half is unlike the other half, it's asymmetrical. The B stands for border. If it's an irregular scalloped or poorly circumscribed border, that could be a problem. C stands for color, and the color will vary from one area to another in shades of tan, brown, black, and sometimes white, red, or blue. And D is a diameter. If it's larger than six millimeters, which is about the size of a pencil eraser, that could be a warning sign of melanoma. Now, what I've had are basal cell carcinomas and squamous cell carcinomas. Melanoma can kill if you have any of those indications on your skin, you need to see a doctor as soon as possible. The melanoma can metastasize to other parts of the body and it can be deadly. Squamous cell carcinoma, of which I've had one, 
is not as serious, though it can metastasize to other areas. And the four surgeries for the basal cell carcinoma, well, that makes sense because it is the most common form of skin cancer. The surgeries I had are called Mohs surgery. And you can kind of think of it as planting bulbs in your garden. When you plant a bulb, depending on the size of your bulb, you scoop out some soil and then put the bulb into it. Well, when the doctor detects after a biopsy, as he did in this case, the cancer that's growing on my face, he scoops out a section of it. And then they cauterize the bleeding and put a bandage on the wound and send you out to the waiting room. And the doctor goes into the lab and looks at the skin cells under a microscope. If it's a small cancer and he was able to scoop it all out, you're done and they stitch you up. And in this case, that's what happened. It's six stitches and they were able to go through the first layer of skin into the second layer and get all of the cancer. But once before, I had a cancer that was a little worse than that. It was deeper. And so like with your flower bulbs, if you've got a big bulb, you need to dig a deeper hole to place it into. Doctor looks under the microscope, sees that there's still some cancerous cells at the bottom of what he excised and goes back in and digs out more. Now, I specifically asked the doctor this year about how deep he went. And he said I was lucky. He caught it quickly, it was still pretty small, and he didn't need to go very deep. While basal cell carcinomas won't metastasize, they can grow. They can grow into the fat layer underneath the skin, into the muscle as well. In that case, they have to cut out an awful lot of skin to get rid of the cancer. And disfiguring of your face or other body part could result. Now, I'm trying to make this sound unpleasant because it is unpleasant. It's one of those things that if you can avoid it, I highly recommend that you do so. Wear a hat, wear sunscreen, wear long sleeve shirts. Be aware of your own history when it comes to potential damage that you've done to your skin. And then you don't have to sit in the room smelling your cauterized skin as they stitch you up. I'll be removing this bandage in a couple days and I'll be able to put a smaller one in place, but I'm keeping it in place for me and you in this video so you can see the potential if you don't take care of yourself. I'm serious. I want to be serious. I think you should be serious because I've known people that have died from melanoma, just a couple but that's too, too many. And there are many others out there that could be headed down that path. I'll link to some important information in the description below so you can do some more research. If you suspect that you have damage that could lead to cancerous growths, or if maybe you might have recognized with the ABCD of melanoma that you could have a problem and need to see a doctor. I'll be okay. And in my future videos, this bandage will be gone. The scar will probably not be recognizable at all, but I still will live with a lifetime of cancer because I'm aware of it and I need to take care of myself. I hope I've made you aware of it so that you can take care of yourself. I'm Gardner Scott. Enjoy gardening and protect yourself. Mm -hmm.